Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Cohen, and this video is to serve as an introduction to reading spectral domain optical coherence tomography scans. I'm going to start off with a macular scan, just a line scan, which is a high definition scan through the center of the macula. And what I'd like you to strive towards doing or aim toward is when you look at the scan, what you should be thinking of is the retina. And so this schematic diagram of the retina layers corresponds roughly to what you'll see in a high definition line scan through the macula. The center of the macula looks a little different in that the cells are dragged over a little bit and the center of the fovea is mostly the photoreceptors and the photoreceptor nuclei. But when you get a little bit off center, then you get the layers of the retina, which roughly correspond to what you see on the optical coherence tomography scan. It's a little challenging to memorize all these layers. So what I like to think of is the dark areas as being the nuclei in the bright or reflective areas as being the plexiform layers or the nerve fiber layer. So if you start at the top of the picture that you're looking at, the first bright line is the nerve fiber layer, which is a like a plexiform layer in that the fibers are running perpendicular to the incident beam of light. The next layer is the ganglion cell layer where you can see the darker area which you would expect with the nuclei of the ganglion cells and then the next layer which is bright is your inner plexiform layer followed by your inner nuclear layer followed by your outer plexiform layer and then finally your outer nuclear layer and as you can see the three dark areas correspond to the nuclei in the retina and the three bright layers correspond to where the axons are in the plexiform layers and the nerve fiber layer. When you get to the last four bright lines on the bottom of the retina, which are extremely important, it's probably worth just memorizing those. The external limiting membrane, which is the dimmest of the lines, is thought to be very important and correlated to visual function and visual potential, and that's formed by the foot plates of the Mueller cells. The next bright line is the ellipsoid zone of the photoreceptors, and that has to do with the reflectance of the mitochondria, which are, as far as we can tell, highly reflective and form that bright line. In the photoreceptors, the mitochondria are fairly tightly packed in just one area of the photoreceptor, as you can see on this image. And then the last two bright lines are both from the pigment epithelium, and those are very bright. The melanin in the pigment epithelium is thought to be the most reflective area for the optical coherence tomography, and the innermost of those two lines is from the interdigitation zone, where the retinal pigment epithelial cells wrap around the photoreceptor outer segment and then the back layer is from the retinal pigment epithelial cells themselves. And again, this is all what you'll expect to see in a normal scan. Later in the course there'll be a series of short videos explaining pathology and, and pathophysiology as reflected on the OCT scan that you would see in the different retinal layers. And planning on going from the inner inside to the outside, so starting with the vitreous and then going to the inner retina, the middle retina, the outer retina, the retinal pigment epithelium, and finally the choroid. But it's important as a reference to understand the normal scan and the anatomy that you're looking at. When I talk to patients about their OCT scans, I actually always have a laminate copy of a normal line scan that I show them as a reference, and that's very helpful so they can understand where they deviate from a normal scan or where their scan deviates from a normal scan. Uh, I hope this was of help. This is the first in a series of videos on this course on interpretation of optical coherence tomography scans.